Hello everyone, and welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2. There is a new weekly challenge. I don't really do the weekly challenges very much, and I'm still in the middle of the Starship one. I take more than a week to do these things, apparently. Uh, but the new one was intriguing, so I decided to give it a go. It said, our challenge is to build, as accurate as we can, a ship from one of our favorite sci-fi movies or games. And, well, you can see what I did. Um, this is the NCC-1701, the original Enterprise, and the reason I like to do the Enterprise is because it is very, very challenging to do, especially since I'm not satisfied with making replicas that just sit in the VAB. I do want them to launch to space and into orbit and all that business, uh, preferably under their own power. Uh, though it's tempting to strap boosters on something like this. But you can see why it's a problem, right? Aerodynamically, it's a problem. Uh, in terms of the thrust vector and the center mass, it's a problem. We have to do some tricky things with it. And structurally, it's a problem because, well, it's got all these thin parts, right? There's the sort of, we've got wing pieces uh, to the nacelles, and then we've got this thing here, which isn't the most structurally sound thing either. Uh, and I've got wing pieces around it too to provide some extra yaw control. So, yeah, we've got structural deficits, you might say. And that's what makes it challenging. So obviously you'll wonder whether this is actually going to just immediately fall apart on the launch pad. I wondered that too. I say wondered because I had originally started recording this and I took it out to the pad for the first time while recording so I could show people the results. And unfortunately, I've done a few tests, but the video got corrupted. OBS crashed and corrupted the video, so I don't have that video anymore of all the initial testing. Sorry. I'll tell you what happened. Basically, actually, the first time we brought it out, I had no struts on here, and it w remained intact, which is remarkable. And we've... Uh, it was still wobbly, though, and it flopped backwards, and uh, I decided that we needed some additional tweaking to the thrust vector. And so there were many explosions that I'm sorry I can't bring to you. Maybe there'll be more explosions now. It's not fully tested yet. We didn't bring it to orbit or anything. But we did get to space, which... Uh, so, yeah, I wish I could have shown you that. Um, the center of lift vector is over here. I mean, that, I don't know if it, I should really trust it, though, because it's pointing in that direction and there's nothing asymmetrical. I had added these wing pieces here for... Yaw, they actually helped, even though it looks like this is problematic, so I'm going to leave that be. Um, we have the core here. One of the problems has been that I keep rerouting things, and so now everything is messed up. That you can't do mirror symmetry anymore, and I can't even tweak the engines. What we have as far as engines are two vectors on the warp nacelles, and then four thuds, two down here and two up here. And... The use of the vectors is obviously because they vector. They uh, gimbal a lot and can control the thrust through the center of mass, as you can see. The challenge with the NCC-1701 in particular is its nacelles being high placed. And so since they're a natural place for us to put the rocket engines, the big body down here means that they're uh, not really pointing through the center of mass unless you tilt them. And then the tilt uh, has to change along the way because the fuel that you have up here drains, and so, relatively speaking, everything down here gets more massive. With the NCC-1701D, the Enterprise from Next Generation, uh, that has the warp nacelles in the center, and so that's a much more val uh, balanced place. It's complicated, and that's what makes it fun. I'm sorry I couldn't bring you some of the fun that I intended to bring, but let's launch it and see what happens. It's definitely not done yet, so... Uh, the, the saucer section, despite all my strutting, I've added struts now. Initially, uh, it flopped just about this much without struts, and it still flops around with the struts. <laughs> so, uh, But I was su pleasantly surprised that everything didn't fall apart, or at least the wings didn't fall apart. They're burying the mass of the nacelles. Well, initially they were alone in that, and then I put some struts to help. But they were able to do it on their own, so that was a surprise. I might have to reduce them to be the medium wing because the medium wing 
uh, well, will be lighter and give us more delta V. We're cutting pretty close if we ever want to get to, uh, to orbit space. We're still cutting it close uh, because we're gonna have a lot of drag. But anyway, let's see how it goes. And launch. And. Manually try to get. I wanted it to hold up because it's troublesome for me to do so, but I don't know if it's gonna be able to. It seems to lean to one side these days. Oh, well, well, I wanted to go faster than that. I don't mind us going retrograde, if that's the way it wants to go. The controller is a little bit offset from the center mass, but not that much that it should be like this. It's a little bit curious. Including compared to previous attempts. I don't know if I can go full speed. The last time when I got to space, I did not go full thrust. I'm gonna try it now and see how it goes. Even at 30 kilometers height, this thing will flip out though if it's not pointed at prograde. Okay, got. Uh, uh, <laughs> just SAS control is not good enough. Oh, uh, the saucer separated. We have saucer separation. That's not good. <laughs> it's not what we want. Bill's in here. No, that's not going to work out for us. It has some of its own fuel for the thud engines. I mean, not that... I think the fuel feeds through just fine, but... I wonder if this flies. Yeah, other sci-fi ships, of course, their properties are more in line with everything. The center of mass, center of lift is in the right place. Even the X-Wing, you know, it's got proper wings in the back. And, you know, engines in sort of the right place. So... A lot easier to deal with. We're going down a lot faster than I thought a really big fairing would. But we're still high. Now the reason I'm bothering to fall this down is we have previously discovered that fairings are very resilient. Sort of like a leaf in the wind here. That vertical speed indicator is still useless. <laughs> Genuinely. What, what is the point of that exactly? It's not even showing right numbers at all, ever. And... Oh! Success. So far. Bill has survived. The Sarsa section, very resilient. See? Perfectly safe, this thing. Perfectly safe. So first, I just want to get it to space on its own. I had done that before, but of course I lost the recording and we'll have that. And then I'll probably slap boosters on it and try to get it to orbit. I mean, it was constructed in orbit in the first place. It wasn't meant to fly to orbit except in that one movie, but you know, anyway. Oh no, it flipped. Oh, I went too fast with it. I should have thrown down more. Okay. Right. Alright. Let's try that again with uh, a little bit more respect for Manx Q and everything. Okay. I wonder at what I'll shoot, I could plausibly turn it. Ooh, it's wobbly already. Oh, 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 you don't have to go radial. Why did... I, I really wish it wouldn't just decide to do that. <laughs> um, radial was not where I wanted to go. When I say up, that does not necessarily mean radial. Game. Why did you decide that on your own? 
Yeah, it's when it switches from surface to orbit, it this it switches from up to radial, which is well, sure didn't work out for us this time. But we certainly can't get to orbit like this. We'll just see how close we can get. I need a booster. I think just one booster. I mean, let's face it, if we have a lot, then we're going to end up flipping because we're just going to go faster. And faster is not what we need. We just need more Delta V. And having more Delta V, we need a little bit more thrust. But not a lot more thrust. But we are in space, folks. We are in space with the Enterprise. I think these are splayed out a little bit too far apart, maybe? I'll have to check. Oh, come on. Reaction wheels exist here. Um, they're in the... which got it? Cockpits, the... What is that one? Wanderer and the Cupola. But SAS hates to use them for some reason. We should have turned off the thuds, they're not very efficient here, and probably not necessary. Nice to see it's mostly balanced like this though, right? That's important, as it drains the fuel. So we're short about 900 meters per second. Alright, let's try and put a booster on and see if we can make it happen. Well, just having another warp nacelle like this seems like the best way to go. Yeah, but this is what happens with mirror symmetry right now. Okay. Uh. Okay. Looking good so far. Do we have enough? It's not reading any extra Delta V here, so it's tough to say. Okay, it was getting a little bit too vigorous there. It doesn't read any Delta V up top, so I don't know. I'm gonna try to go to SAS control so it doesn't do that thing with the radial again. Gotta start turning. Let me shut down some of these because we're not getting enough Delta V like this. Okay, I'm gonna jettison the booster. Okay. I don't think we have enough though. I need to get a fuel line on the booster, from the booster to the body, and maybe add some more fuel. Or maybe that's not reading the right number. Well, it's really close. Okay, yeah, I think that, that will probably do it if we can just cross-feed the fuel in. And... Launch. Uh, it might not be enough delta V. We'll see. Okay, booster off. Still probably more successful than I thought it would be. Oh, it's shaky though, let's stroll down. We will respect max Q here. Okay, getting very wiggly here. I don't know if I can trust the Delta V there. I'm gonna try SAS control. Uh, no, get over to prograde. Don't you dare. Uh, 
Okay. In theory, the Delta V exists, but yeah, the numbers are untrustworthy. Gotta shut off the bottom thuds. For a little bit more efficiency. And maybe the other thuds as well. Ah, we might be just a little bit short. We're just a little bit short. Uh, well, I've had enough. <laughs> um, we are, uh, we are, we are in orbit as much as, oops, as much as Starship was planning to get to orbit, right? Right. So it's an orbital launch. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tweak it a little bit. It's very close. It's just like I need to adjust my launch profile. But hey, you know, it's sort of here. Definitely in space, somewhat in orbit, not quite, depending your, on your point of view on the Starship launch <laughs> or attempt. Um, yeah. Enterprise. Very challenging, very interesting to do. We'll see if uh, more comes out of this. Maybe we can roleplay a little bit, who knows. But yeah, it's not as wobbly as it could be. Uh, it's not as wobbly as it could be. Re-entry. Tell you what, uh, I will attempt to revisit this some other time and then we'll see how it does. I mean, it's obviously not re-entering very well, but we'll try and see how it does in daylight instead of seeing it in this situation. So right now I'll probably revert this. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.